Leather Sewing and Crafting family. I'm Brother Edu uh, no, I'm an ambassador. <laughs> uh, uh, the educators are right in the lobby waiting. I'm an ambassador, Angela Wolf. Welcome to the party. We are live and you never know what's going to happen when we're live. So if you've never been here before, say hi. I see so many of you rolling in. Helen, great to see you from Louisiana, by the way. Uh, glad that you're able to get online. And um, anyways, we are live on Brothers Sewing and Crafting Facebook and YouTube page. And we love it when you come to join us for this fabulous hour. So let me just give you a little hint. I do have actually two brother educators that are joining us today, Brenda and Jane. And here's your hint, ruffler foot. Now I posted this even in my newsletter because so many of you have asked, what the heck is a ruffler foot? I have one, I've never, for years I've never used it. I am so excited for this lesson. So if you join us late, don't forget you can share this to your page. And if you're on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to brother. All right, everyone, let's bring Jane and Brenda to the party. Welcome lady, welcome. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, look at those beautiful quilts behind you. I need to make some more. <laughs> <laughs> gorgeous, gorgeous. And Jane, your room looks amazing. I see a beautiful, is that a 10 needle next to you? It is. I oh. am lucky enough to have a 10 needle. Oh, yes. In fact, when it comes around, right now is when we all start working on a lot of our gifts for the holidays. That's when the 10 needle can really come in handy. <laughs> yes, for sure. And so then, everyone, uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, and we are going to be talking about some quick gifts for the holidays. Oh, even better. I didn't even share that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I saw the message. You two are, are going to be working on the ruffler foot. And I have to tell you, through all the years of sewing, that is one foot that I get the most questions on that I don't use very often. And when I saw what you were going to talk about, I thought everyone has to see this because this foot is amazing. It actually is a little addictive once you start working with it. <laughs> I was just going to say that, Angela, that ever since, you know, kind of preparing for this show and kind of adding to some other gifts that I've been doing, because, you know, all these samples get you motivated to just make some gifts for Christmas. But I, um, it, I can't stop hardly using it. I have a, I'm going to make everyone Thanksgiving towels. Forget waiting until Christmas. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. So I, um, who would like to take it off? Right before we get started though, I just see one comment on here and I just wanted to address this. So on Tuesday, uh, we did end the show abruptly for all of you that were watching. And I do have permission from Joanne and brother to say she's doing well, she's at home, she's fine, she's resting. And thank you for your thoughts and prayers for that. So uh, I, saw, I saw quite a few people asking, I want you to know, A-OK. -okay. <laughs> all right, ladies, who would like to take this off? I, how about if I start off, Brenda? Sounds good. You can do what you want. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I will start off because there, um, it may seem a little intimidating because of all the adjustments. Whoop, bring it back. This <laughs> way. All the adjustments that you might have to make, right? So it looks a little intimidating. But okay. So what we're going to do is start off here. This screw right here, if you loosen this one and this one, what we're trying to do is center the needle so it goes into the, whoop, this is difficult. Go to your, go to your right a little bit, Jim. go to your right. There you go, there you go, right? That's perfect. Yeah, okay. So what we wanna do is center the needle so that it drops in a tiny hole, okay? So this is going to be your left right adjustment okay so when this is on the machine this will if you unscrew this and it'll shift left to right tighten it down once you'll take the um your hand crank lower your needle once you have this attached to your machine which right here you would attach it just like you would a regular foot sliding this over the needle bar okay so you can kind of just go in slide this over the needle bar this little fork right here and then drop down drop it down and latch it um, onto your machine just like you would attach any foot now this one is your left and right adjustment okay you want the needle down and you want the needle to be centered in this little hole this one here is forward and back, okay? 
So this one you would adjust to center the, the needle in the hole, you would adjust forward and back. Okay, so those two, those make sense, right? You just want to basically center the needle onto in the hole. Now, the other two adjustments to be made is up here. Okay, so these are how many stitches the machine will take before it takes a tuck, okay? So you can lift this bar up, okay? Slide it over and you can choose one stitch per tuck, six stitches per tuck or 12 stitches per tuck. And then there's also a little um, star which means you can put it there and it kind of disengages it, right? So if you want to take a few stitches at the beginning, you would just slide it over to this first one, take a few stitches, lift up, and then you can choose what one that you like. Um, and you're going to be sewing um, a bunch of different samples because not only can you, would you change here to six, 12, one stitch per tuck. But also when you change on your machine, the stitch length, that will also have a, an impact on what it looks like, okay? So then the other one is this um, screw, okay? When you tighten it to the right, righty tighty lefty loosey when you tighten it to the right that is going to make a deeper tuck um a more depth to the tuck okay and when you loosen it then it's not going to bring as much of that fabric in to um as a tuck or depth or thickness or however you want to uh try to explain that. So there are numbers on that as well up here. And so I would just kind of start out by maybe putting it in the center. Okay. And then, and then put it in the center here too, the number six. Okay. And then from there, start out with 2.5. And then you can kind of see what that looks like when you're, um, when you're gathering and see if that if what adjustments you want to make from there now the other thing i want to show you is right here there the, you would put the fabric and brenda will show you this closer over to and maybe right. hey jane come to your right there you go there we go so, and here, so there's a little bar that you would be sliding the fabric under right here, okay? And um, that's where the fabric has a little um, kind of fingers that's going to push that fabric through, and then, um, and that's how it's going to make a tuck. So, are there any um, questions possibly on, on the adjustments? That you I'm just like. checking. Uh, some people are saying that they've had this foot for a long time and they haven't tried it. Yeah, uh, once once you start using it, like Brenda was saying, it gets to be really addictive. You'll start, you'll you'll be doing fabric and ribbon and making projects and crafting and it's so fun. much fun. So Amber wants to know if it's based on stitches, can we adjust that even further by adjusting the length of our stitches? Yes, correct. Yeah. So you can, if it, um, if your stitch length is shorter, then your tucks are going to be closer together, right? If your stitch length is longer, it's your tucks are going to be further apart. So yes, that makes a big impact. Excellent. Excellent. Um, I think that's, everybody says they're really good. They, they just want to keep going. You're doing okay. good. All right. All right. Good. Okay. All right, Brenda, Brenda. Do you want to show them how to? Um... Absolutely. Hey, Jane, thank you for explaining all the parts to the ruffler. I mean, right. it's amazing foot because um, 
it's you just have a little small hole that you're stitching in but it has to be that way so that it gets such a it's so precise and and again i've had so much fun um just getting used to it and and making some uh little towels i've kind of started there and here's one that um i did i've got three rows of ruffles on it and i just uh you know just different fabrics and um, I kind of double fold, I double fold the fabric. I cut these strips, by the way, at four and a half inches wide, uh, press them in half, gather them, and then attach them to the towel, hiding the raw edges up here with some ribbon. And um, either, this one is a satin ribbon, but I've used grow grain ribbon. And I'll show you some other samples when we get done here um, using the ruffler foot. Brenda, before you yes. take that down, that is so stinking cute. Could you just Isn't lift? It? So that's one towel. And if you could just lift up those ruffles, do you just have the ruffles? Yeah. So, so, um, and you'll see more. I'm going to show you more on how I spaced them and I marked my towel. But there's the first row and it just comes up. I marked this first line. I marked lines on here. I got to have cheat lines, right? You know, cheating's okay as long as it's legal, right? Oh my gosh, this so the, is amazing. I yeah. I you just took a towel that could be like, I don't know, five bucks and turned it into like a $20 towel. What a great gift. I know, and it's, I mean, there's, what a way to use some of your favorite fabrics. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so absolutely. That's, that's one, I'm gonna set that aside. And to um, coordinate I'm too. gonna apologize for my camera today. I have another one I usually use, but it's, it's not, uh, we're not getting along, we're just, <laughs> We're having a little tiff evidently, so we'll see how we do here. Um, and then as I was kind of getting used to it, um, I thought, you know, I, I needed to do some little practice things. So, and of course, this is not gonna show up because I really didn't expect to show it to you here on a white background. So tell me, can you tell? Uh, we can uh, see I guess, it. Uh, you know what, let me just, if you don't mind, take a moment and just dim my lights on my machine because I'm thinking if I do that, I could, you might actually see it a little, maybe not quite that dim. We'll try that, I don't know. That looks great, we can see it. Okay, good deal. So this first one is at a depth of six. So you, uh, I know that you were listening um, to uh, Jane, there's a screw right here let me zoom in on this. Oh, I look at that. Now that, you know what? You two just gave us the perfect presentation. Jane explained everything, and now we can see it, wham, right on the machine. Like So this screw here is where you're going to adjust that depth. And I, and I have found that my favorite is at six, which is about halfway. So I have it adjusted to that. That's what we're going to use today, and that's actually what I did all of these with. But I'll say, you know, just have some fun and play with different um, depths and stitch um, uh, stitches per one uh, pleat and stitch length because they're all going to make a difference. And not only that, the fabric is going to make a difference on whether you have a single layer or a double layer. So there's a lot of things, just like with everything else in sewing, that can make a difference. This one is a depth six, and it's one pleat for every stitch. So this first half sorry, is done with a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. And then if you notice, I come over here at the end, this is a 4.5 millimeter. So if you look at it, you can see how the pleats are real tight at the beginning and then loosen up just a bit at the end or a little more space. And that's because of your stitch length. The next one I have is again, a pleat depth of a six, so I just left that the same. And I started out with this one, six stitches, or one pleat for every six stitches. And I started out with a 2.0 millimeter stitch length, and then went on up to a 4.0 millimeter. What a difference. I mean, that doesn't yeah. even look, you did it just by changing one little thing. Yep, and that's just the stitch length right on, the, on your machine. I mean, that's all that was stitched. And wow. then if I try, I wanted to try one doing one pleat for every 12 stitches. Started out with a stitch length of 3.0. And then I went a little smaller on this one to a 1.6. And you can see 
See how it changed? Absolutely. Just, you know, it's like twice as uh, much space in between. That's kind of funny. Then, let's see, I'm going to just zoom out here a little bit. Then I decided, okay, I needed to figure out what I want to use for the ruffles on my towels. And so I decided that I really like the um, one pleat for every six stitches. And I went with a 2.5 millimeter. So that's um, just kind of a little sampling. This is going from 2.0 to 4.0, but that's kind of what we're gonna use to do our ruffle today. Then one thing else, uh, one, one other thing I did, I played, I took a piece of fabric, just a strip, and I folded it so the raw edges were meeting in back of this strip. <clears throat> and then I just adjusted where my fabric went under the needle. And I did again the six, um, or the, yeah, six stitches to every one pleat. And this is a stitch length of 3.0, but I, I did it so that I was stitching down the middle. So you could totally do this on some ribbon or lace. How about lace? Wouldn't that be fun? To oh, stitch down the right middle and add really it. Good. <laughs> I know. Yes. I, I just thought it was really, I can't, I need to go get some more, um, uh, you know, media. Fabric, I'm done playing with fabric. I want some lace and ribbon now. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so. Here's what I want to show you on the towel. Just these are so simple, and I have a couple others. I'm gonna, or at least one other one, I'm gonna show you a little bit later. But this is what I did. I just took a t. Uh, whoops. Let's see if I can get more showing. Here we go. That's better, right? Right. So I took a, just a, a dish towel. This is a, I think 20 inches by 28, but I also quickly figured out they're all a little bit different. They could be 16 inches wide, clear up to 20. So whatever, it really doesn't matter. Um, I decided on three strips. And again, I took and I marked my first line, as you can see, and this is like a um, erasable pin. So, you know, something that just erases. This one erases with heat. But I took and I marked my first line one and three quarter inches from the edge of the, the, the end of the towel. So when I did my first ruffle, I took the edge of that ruffle and I lined it right up next to the line. And if you guys have been around for a while, you know my favorite tool in the whole wide world is a water soluble glue pen. So after I got my ruffle laid out and to the size I wanted, I took and folded over or folded in um, a quarter inch and then another quarter inch pressed on the end and then I just stitched. And I guess I should get it on camera so you could actually see, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I turned in the edge um, after I ruffled, by the way. Because the ruffler, again, as I explained, has a small hole. And going over some, uh, two, uh, you know, this bulky seam possibly wasn't something that really liked to do. So I just ruffled and then I folded in a quarter inch and another quarter inch and then top stitched. Cut it to the length I needed plus a half inch. I cut the extra half inch at the other end. And then I folded a quarter inch and another quarter inch and again, top stitched. Laid my ruffle along this marked line, my grow grain over the ruffle edge, stitched using an, um, like a stitch in the ditch or a, a guide and just edge stitched right along the edge of the first, uh, uh, one side of the um, ribbon and then edge stitched along the other side. And it totally encases um, the raw edges and makes a beautiful finish. That's gorgeous. Uh, just a quick question for you, Brenda. How sure. wide was, was that ruffle? Because you have it on the double fold. How wide is it? Yeah, before you fold it. It's uh, The strip was four and a half inches wide. Four and a half inches wide. I know somebody. Mm -hmm. And then when I folded it, of course, it, you know, two and a quarter inches. And my ruffle is probably just about a quarter inch in. So Wonderful. I'm and, uh, going someone, to move this. Someone had asked you just one quick question that related to that. Can you, could they have done that with one layer of fabric instead of folding it at the bottom? Well, they could if they wanted to. The only thing is you would have a wrong side and a right side. So if you 
wanted to put your wrong side next to the towel, you could, but you would have, you'd have to hem it though, for sure. By folding it, at least I don't have to put any hem there and it's completely done. But it does make the towel heavier. When you make one of these, trust me, mm -hmm. you're gonna go, wow, this towel got heavier. <laughs> but well, and I think the light bulb just went on. For anybody thinking, I'm gonna use one layer, uh, it's gonna have one side that's not, I like it where it's the right side on both sides. Not that one side's not right, but one side's the wrong side. So that just summed it up right there. Fold it. Absolutely. <laughs> it makes it a little bit faster. And again, everybody knows that we want, to, especially with, you know, I hate to say it, but Christmas coming, um, you know, we want like really quick and fast, easy, fun, cute. You know, if we can go cute and fast all in the same project, how fun is that? <laughs> I'm in. Okay. I'm going to get my uh, uh, my strip and let's do a ruffle. What do you guys think? I think that sounds great. But you before know I do, there's one important thing I want to show you. And I'm going to now take my camera and I'm going to zoom in because this is so fun to watch. Brenda, one of the yes, things that I forgot to mention when I was explaining the, um, the foot is um, a couple of things. One tip that I have is once you have the adjustments that you want, go ahead and lock your screen. So then, oh. right. So then um, it, if you can, if you can lock. Oh, it. yes. Yeah. If you can. I'm sewing on a luminaire so I can um, lock the screen. And then several other machines also have that little lock um, button at the top of the screen, which makes it really nice as far as, <laughs> you know, you don't want to accidentally, you know, uh, go to a zigzag stitch or anything like that and break a needle. And then um, also make sure to use the, I don't know if I mentioned it, but Brenda is showing a sample of that right now. It's just use the hand crank and bring down your needle to make sure it is centered in that hole before you get started. So yeah, I'm turning my hand wheel. I mean, there's, uh, there's many times when we say don't touch that hand wheel, but this is definitely one of the times when you wanna test it because again, there is just a small opening for uh, this and and the reason as I've already explained is so that we can get such accuracy on our stitching so it looks to me like I am ready and um, I, my needles uh, not hitting the ruffler foot at all so let's go ahead and load up what I call load up my ruffler or my ruffle <laughs> so on the ruffler did I sorry no I was laughing um, Sorry, oh, I couldn't help it. That's all right. <laughs> on the the ruffler, you go, <laughs> you go, girl. <laughs> on the ruffler, there's a little, um, oh, I don't know what you call it, but this this little arm here is what's going to grab the top of your fabric. And every, in my case here that I have my setting for, every six stitches, it's going to take a little pleat in that fabric. So I need to get my fabric right under there, but above this part. So let me. Let me make sure I didn't move anything. I'll tell you, I really can't check my um, needle too much. Um, Jane, don't tell them that I broke a needle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I won't so say anything. <laughs> okay. I'm going to try to keep my arm away from the camera. And that yeah, I found that very difficult. Um, but I have a piece of quilter's template plastic here because this is really tight, not tight in space, but to go under this little fork that grabs your fabric. So I found that if I lay this on top of my fabric, like this, and slide it, get my arm out of the way, slide it then between where I need to. It's much easier when you're not in camera, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, so wait. slide it back. Once you, get that, once you get that slid in, then we'll look yep. at it. There you go. Yep. There you go. And now lower your foot. I have it under the needle. I have it lined up where I want to. Now I just take my um, plastic, slide it to the back and pull it away. And my fabric is still intact and it was so easy. That's so a now great I'm going to go ahead Brenda. and put my needle down. That's a great tip, by the way, Brenda. I didn't think yeah, about Yeah, it works. That. It's pretty slick. Pretty yep. slick. Um, I want to talk about this and... Um, uh, this little lever, I have it set for a pleat every six stitches. 
but I could set it for one, a pleat every stitch, one pleat every 12, but there's also a setting over here that's just a straight stitch. And that's clear to the right. I'm gonna go ahead and set it there for just a second. Take a couple stitches, make sure my fabric's moving the way. Okay, it looks good. I'm gonna head stop. Now I'm gonna move it back to my one pleat every six stitches, and here we go. And whoop, Brenda, what do you have for a stitch length on that? I have a 2.5 millimeter. And you know, I kind of take this at a pretty, um, I guess you might say slow, medium, a slow medium, because I want the pleats to turn out well. And uh, I also believe there's a lot of fabric that has to be stitched when I have a double layer of, this is pretty, this is quilt weight cotton that I'm using. So, you know, uh, I had fun just playing around with different things and excited to try different things. So I, I really suggest trying these settings and different fabrics. I think you'll have a, a lot of fun. If you don't have this foot, I believe that you can get it from your brother dealer. And I believe the, let me look that up. The SA number, if you guys want a number on it, is 565 so it's sa565 and again i'm using this on my luminaire but i know that it can be used on several other brother machines any questions angela while i stitch i want to kind of get through this while we talk maybe yeah that sounds um, good i'm just putting up the ruffler foot number on here uh just so they have it Okay. And I apologize for all capital letters. <laughs> I'm not yelling at you, but I just put a, it up there. So there are a few questions for you. And uh, one thing, uh, which about four people asked this, so I, I'm going to just ask it now. Have you ever tried this, Brenda, with knits? With what? Knits, a knit fabric. I haven't, but that is a good question. I mean, I don't see any, I really don't see a problem. Jane, have you tried it? A knit. Um, I've tried it on ribbon and cotton, and um, I was thinking that would be great to do on lace. You know how they have the, where you can take a pair of uh, an old jean skirt or something like that, and then add lace or a lightweight sheer fabric? That's what I was thinking. It would be kind of, uh, yeah, the that pretty sheer, and and then just make it longer. I I think that would be really cute. Actually, Jane, when you mentioned that, someone else mentioned um, a rolled hem at the edge. If you had one layer, and I was thinking to myself exactly similar to what you just talked about. If it was a sheer fabric, just take the whole piece of fabric, run that little rolled edge to the edge, and then do this on it. Then you uh, have it all finished in two steps. But yeah. there are um, a couple more good questions for you. Shirley wants to know, should you use the straight stitch plate? Does that matter? I just have on here the regular, not the straight stitch, but just the regular one. Okay. And that is a, um, a good question. I think you could use either. I don't know as it would um, really matter, but, um, but that is a good question. I use just the regular... Um, stitch plate as well so that's a good question that is because if you're using maybe one of that finer fabrics that we're talking about the sheer see-through uh something like that if you're having any issues with it getting stuck inside your needle plate then use that right really right. Good one. <laughs> right that's a good comment love that nosy likes your arrow <laughs> i know it's very handy because my eyes you know evidently are getting old um and it makes it easy for me to see where I want it lined up. <laughs> Look at how great that looks. Now, just while you have that there, this Edith asked a question that's perfect for this. Is there a formula to figure out how much fabric length you need to ruffle oh. the towel, or you just cut a big piece and go for it? <laughs> you know, um, it, I, I, I think I mentioned how I was doing different towels. Like it was from, I just picked up different colors and th thinking ahead and to just see what I like and what quickly realized not every towel is made the same with the same width and all this. But mm -hmm. I I would say, if, let's just say you're gonna do a lot of towels and they're all 20 inches. It'd be worth your time to figure it out. But the first towel I did was 
um, 18, about 18, almost 18 inches um, wide, right? So I took the time, let me move this. I took the time and I figured out my formula for that towel. Then I pulled out the next towel and it was a different width. <laughs> so what I decided to do is just do my ruffles, take and fold in the ends like, uh, like a quarter inch and then another quarter inch top stitch and be done with it and attach it to the, ha of, um, to the towel, right? But mm -hmm. just for, it's gonna be trial, it's gonna be a play around. But for an example, this, um, that for the first towel, I was able to use about 27 inches of a four and a half inch strip, right? And when I ruffled it at my formula, I ended up with 18 and a half. Okay. I think that there's so much of variables and, Absolutely. you know, the stitch, the stitch length, the, um, the type of fabric, single layer, double layer. Um, uh, how many pleats do you want per stitch? So there's, uh, and then how deep that you have that um, tuck. So you'd really have to play around. And like Brenda was saying, um, if you're going to be making lots of them, then yeah, definitely check that out. Uh, measure your fabric before you start and see what you end up with, with your favorite setting on that type of fabric. That would be my exactly. suggestion. I agree with that totally. Um, I just want to ask you ladies, can you see this all right? A-okay. Okay. Okay, perfect. Um, this is our, uh, we already had the one strip on, the one ruffle. Now we've made this ruffle. And so what I would do now is before I attach it to this, I would um, cut it to my, uh, the, the width I want it, an extra half inch on each side and finish my edge on each side. And then once I have it finished, as I mentioned, I'm going to take and line up these raw edges. And I can do this. This is water soluble with my little handy dandy glue pen, right? So I'm going to just put a, a dot of glue there, put that right up there, and then just kind of run a, a, a little bit of glue right along, right under that uh, line, and then lay this up there, and you'll press it right into place. Do that clear across your towel. Let me see if I can get this better for you. So you're just lining it up right along this uh, this marked line, gluing it in place. Once you have it all glued in place, let me do a little bit more and I'll be a little easier to show you. Okay, there we go. Now we have a little, we have a few inches to work with. How's that? <clears throat> That's really cute, Brenda. Thanks. I think they're a lot of fun <laughs> and they're not hard. They really, you know, once you, you know, you kind of do it a, like we do everything in assembly line. So once you have it glued in place um, and I'll just take my grow grain ribbon and this could be a personal preference um, because I accidentally bought a black satin for my first one and it turned out really cute. I'm going to lay this over there, have about an extra half inch that I can roll to the back of this towel of ribbon. Not uh, not ruffle, just ribbon. And then after I have that um, glued in place, I'm going to just edge stitch right along the edges of this ribbon on both sides. Just with uh, coordinating, I used uh, try uh, tried to use a matching thread on the ribbon, and I tried to match my ribbon if I can a little bit to the towel just because then the stitching really fades in on the back and you, you know, it looks like you have a nice finished back. Very easy to do. Very yes. easy. Yes, yes. So that, that's a really quick way to ruffle your heart away. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and so I think, um, are there any questions? Because I think yes. Jane has some really cute, let's, am I missing something, Jane? No, there are you a have some really cute, um, couple of cute little things that she went and picked up, and uh, to show you guys that she put ruffles on. So just before, while you're st while you still have that foot there, I just want to ask you this one, Amber. Uh, oops, Charlie, Charlie or Shirley had the same question, but Amber had a question for you. Uh, the ruffler foot, 
that you're doing it. It shows that you're putting the fabric butting up to the right side. Is it possible to put it in the other way? Butting up to the right side? Yeah, so you know how your, your fabric's sliding in right against that foot? She wants to know if it can slide in from the, uh, the left side. Oh, from this way? Yeah. No, because it's it, it can slide in, it slides in from, let me get this, my fingers out of the way. It will slide in from this side, but you have some play where you can actually move it over a little bit. And that's how I was able to take just this fabric and um, move it over so that I stitched down the center of it. Absolutely. That, so if you took a cool. wide, so if you took like a three inch wide um, ribbon, you could, you could line it up, you know, move it over so that you could be stitching down the center of it. There's a, there's quite a bit of play um, and room that you can move this over. Excellent. Maybe you. See how far I have the, I don't know if you can see how oh. far I have the plastic. Yes. So it, it I mean, literally has, uh, oh gosh, I bet you a good inch and I should measure it. Well over an inch, about an inch and a half. Awesome. Awesome. And then Phyllis just had a question while you have that towel there kind of relates to that. What if you, what if you have a piece of fabric and you need to, you don't have enough room, so you have to combine a strip. Um, I would recommend, you know, just combining your strip before you ruffle, but what would you do? I would probably, I would probably do that. I think that would be the easiest thing if, if at all possible. But then of course, if you've already, you know, come to, oops, I need more. I might just, it's real easy to take and pop out a few stitches and then you could add a strip to it and you might, you could just put it in and kind of continue ruffling. You know, I think it, you'd have to, uh, what do I want to call it? Fuss with it more than we would if we just put it together and did it the other way. But sometimes life isn't that easy, right? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. All right, I see some of you asking questions that we already did at the beginning, so make sure you save this and you can go back and watch it from the beginning. She showed the samples and then uh, Jane's gonna show some more things here too. Yeah, I was just gonna show where there is this bar that's right here. So that's where Brenda brought the fabric into is hitting that bar. So there's from there to the uh, where the needle would be going. That's how much space you would have if that makes sense. Okay. And, and I think it was approximately, from what I could see on my machine, about an inch and a half. Yeah, Definitely. I would agree with that. An inch and a half, an inch and three quarter. Yeah. Hey, Brenda, do you have that uh, first towel that you showed? Could you just hold that up one more time, please? I do. Let me go um, put that under there for you. And Chris, I see you asking about how the girl grain finished off at each end, and she showed that at the beginning. She folded it over twice and stitched it, so you'll be able to see that. Okay, so let's see if we can get you a good view here. Oh, I just love that. Isn't it cute? This is like um, this is like my formal one. I'll show you my fun one here in a little bit. Okay, so we're looking if, if we, I'm gonna open this up so that I can kind of show you the back side, okay? Okay. So we've got, um, we've got the ruffle coming to even, it's, it's, it's um, edge stitched here along, you know, folded under like a quarter and then a quarter edge stitch so that the raw edges, because this is gonna go through the wash, I'm assuming. So um, I want it to be finished. And then I brought my ribbon about an extra half inch and then I folded it and folded it again. And it just got stitched down in the back right when I uh, stitched the uh, ribbon to the towel to, over, to cover the raw, raw edge of the ruffle. Boy, was that clear as mud. <laughs> so <laughs> cute. Well, yeah, one so. of the questions that I just saw was, um, can you ruffle as you're sewing and attaching? And the answer to that is yes. So um, I did that um, actually um, on this blanket, okay? Oh, oh that's so cute. Yeah. Um, so what I wanted was a different type of textured fabric for this edge. You know how a little tactile for the children? So this is flannel and it has um, just 
basically right you know two different types of flannel and then cut the same size and then just um i was ruffling and attaching this so uh the plus to that is you can if you had enough i stitched it together as i would a binding right i had a long piece that i thought was going to be long enough but as it turned out as i'm ruffling and stitching it wasn't long enough right so that's the downside because then i had to pull it out and attach more um fabric to it so that um, i would have more fabric to ruffle if i had ruffled it all and then measured it then i could have attached it and knew that i would have enough to go around the complete outer edge does that make sense so there's yeah, an upside yeah. and a downside to being able to stitch and ruffle at the same time the other thing for me personally was it was kind of like tapping your head and rubbing your stomach like you were trying to keep track of the body fabric and, and, and steer that correctly and then um and then have the other fabric on top and having that gather and so um i feel for me personally i like to just gather it because i've tried both ways i like to gather it and then apply it that makes sense. Now you're gonna have everybody watching right now. Can I do that? I can't. Or do you have to go to the right or the left or which and, way? And, and some people are really good at that. <laughs> I'm just not coordinated enough. <laughs> hey, Brenda, Shirley wants to know what was the fabric on that towel. Everybody wants that towel. It's gorgeous. So back to this one, you mean? Yeah, it's it's just a, you know some I don't know some quilters cotton. Um, I just try to you know I was in a hurry as usual um, because we usually have about ten things we're doing, and then I got addicted and decided oh okay I got to make this and I got to make this person one I got to do. <laughs> so I'll be I'll be making them in my sleep. So it's a quilters cotton, just a regular hundred percent cotton. Four and a half inch strips, the width of the fabric, folded in half. I, I, I gathered it, then I cut to measure my uh, a half inch. I cut the strip a half inch wider, well, a whole inch wider, because a half inch for each end, then the width of the towel. If I had to undo a pleat at each end, I folded a quarter inch and then another quarter inch and then top stitched it closed. I didn't care that I was closing the rough, uh, the edge of the ruffle. That really didn't matter to me because I don't need it open. Mm -hmm. um, top stitched that and then attached it to the towel and then, then it was all finished. What does the back look like? Sure. You know, we're sewers. We can look inside the hem. <laughs> yes, I'll just show the bottom half. Whoops. It looks great. I'll get it wow. to where you can see it. Oh, Shirley wants to know if you know the fabric that the actual towel is too. Everybody wants to copy exactly what um, you have. Uh, yeah, you know, okay, I got this towel at Hobby Lobby. Does that help? Oh, no if affiliation with that. Brother, but cat's out of the bag. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> it's a cotton it's 98 percent cotton two percent other fiber there you go it's a mixed batch <laughs> hey so i wanted to just share one more thing i don't know what time if we if i have time oh you do you do everybody's loving oh. this and i was just any thinking other questions I keep asking questions you guys this ruffler though can i just mention the ruffler foot um yep, you know absolutely. all the time with brother and stuff this is like the first time I've really, really, really used it. And I have to say, I'm loving it. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> One tip though, be sure to check when you get it all set up, check that needle drop, make sure that you're clearing it. And after that, it's your home free. It's easy. So you guys all remember the potholders maybe, or some of you might, right? I was just thinking of that. I was just thinking that would be a perfect match with the towel. This and was the this was the episode 185. So in case you didn't see it, this is those. Okay. So uh, I took and made this like such a cute towel to go with the potholders. <laughs> oh my gosh, Brenda! I was just thinking those would be such a great match for the kitchen. And of course, you read my mind. That's adorable. Oh my goodness. 
And again, this is just a plain old white towel, um, three fabrics. I used a white ribbon and, and I don't know if I mentioned it because I'm going to turn this to the back because I want to kind of, the, the reason, first of all, the reason I, I, I thought, well, what color I'm using all these fun colors, what color ribbon? And I found that if I matched my ribbon color to my towel, then when I'm sewing it on, because I'm definitely going to match thread to my ribbon. And then when I turn the towel around, you don't really see the thread on the back if you matched it or, you know, blended it with your towel. So I found that using a ribbon to match the background of your towel was like an easy choice. That way I don't have to think too much, by the way, you guys. <laughs> um, I know what color I'm going to use, but it worked, you know, in my, my strategy worked. So. <laughs> wow. I Everybody's saying I love it. And I uh, Shirley said she made several of those pot holders. In fact, I saw some some people doing stuff with their kids, making those pot holders. Now they have a second project to go with it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, just get the ruffler set up and boy with kids. Did you guys think it was cool to watch it stitch? I was mm -hmm. mesmerized when I first saw how it worked. I could watch that all day. <laughs> you know, when I first started using the ruffler foot, I was like, what could I ruffle? A bed skirt? I was thinking of anything. I never thought of the towel thing, though. That's like much more uh, reasonable than trying to decorate all the beds. But uh, Judy wants to know, did you wash the towel? And someone else asked, did you wash the towel and the fabric before you do this? I didn't. I figure if I wash them one or the other, I mean, then I need to wash everything. But this way it's all done. I can wash it all at once and it can do it shrinking together. And, you know, and I, you know, and we all know that I use the magic glue to, you know, not magic, but, you know, the water soluble glue. So after I make it, I throw it in the wash because it's a dish towel. I mean, right. you know, we just like baby blankets, we want them to use it. How many, I mean, you know, there are things that we hang up on the wall and never take down, but um, we want them to use the towels and, you know, things like that. So I'm going to just wash them afterwards. Awesome. Just checking here. I, I, I am actually drinking out of my Santa in July <laughs> cup because I knew this would be a good idea. Uh, any other questions, everyone? Everyone's saying so much information. Thank you. Yeah. You can also do a ribbon too right so oh. then the edge is already um uh you know so it's not going to fray it's already a, a, a mm, i don't know it's not going to fray right you don't have to yeah. hem it or anything like that so it makes an easy thing to to ruffle and then you can roll it up and you can make little rosettes you know, or you can, um, I got this little skirt at a second time around and then I attached it to the bottom. Oh, that's cute. And then you can add a little uh, embroidery design if you like. So there's so much that you can put ruffles on, you know, curtains, bed skirts, like <laughs> Angela mentioned, you know, dresses, you know, little girls' dresses, uh, kitchen. Uh, I mean, it just goes on and on. Baby blankets. Quick well, and back to the kitchen, Brenda, I was thinking of this, of uh, your, what you just had, the pot holders, the towel, and then last week, and then we've had this a few times, mug rugs, which everyone thinks are so cute, adding that matching ruffle to the mug rugs. I mean, I'm thinking of filling up the whole kitchen. <laughs> this could be, this Thanksgiving, my family's gonna be like, you can't cook, but it sure looks good in here. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but fun, easy, because we all know we love to make those little projects for Christmas, so we hope it helps. Yes, and Carolyn, if you'd like those, that pot holder, that was episode 185, wasn't it, Brenda? 185 is correct. Go back. You can go through uh, Brother's Facebook page or you can go through the YouTube channel and find that quickly. Yes. Everyone's saying thank you, thank you, thank you. I know I'm like, more samples. I just want to see more ruffles. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. more questions, everyone. Thank you. Uh, there was a few back here that I missed, so I just want to make sure that I didn't miss anybody. I think we got the washing. Everybody made a lot of your pot holders, by the way. 
I'm so happy. I got a couple emails, I guess, from people that actually knew me, you know, which, you know, like just not very many, but uh, that sent me some pictures and I thought it was really fun to um, see that. So thank you. I'm glad you liked them. Yeah. I hope you make some towels because now I've moved on to ruffles. Um, the other thing I'll just kind of reset, uh, tell you about getting preparing the towel. I don't wash it as we've already learned until after it's done, but um, mark it with something that's um, erasable. The first line is marked one and three quarters inch from the you know hemmed edge, and then another line one and a half inches from there, and then yet another line one and a half inches. But of course, if you want to add more ruffles, then go right ahead. But trust me, it does get a little bit like it weighted. <laughs> but they look <laughs> cute. They look cute because I took some pictures. I hung it on the oven, you know, like we've got to display it, right? And I took a picture to see how it would look. So it was pretty cute. <laughs> Well, and you could add a monogram. I mean, there's so many. Let the creativity yes. go. Now, Jolene has a question, probably more for you, Jane. Well, both you can answer, but because you had the blanket, how did you do the corners? Great question, too. Okay, so um, I've, in the past, made a lot of these as baby gifts. And uh, when my sister, um, I made a few for her, I just take um, two flannels that coordinate, and then I take a... Um, a plate <laughs> real technical i take a plate and i just take the rotary cutter and go right around the plate and that's my curve <laughs> but i curve the the um corners that's how i did it that is a great solution for that yeah <laughs> i'm just this is a whole kitchen project <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> We'll see it's a multi-purpose multi tool. <laughs> we'll see if we can get more projects for the kitchen. Just give me a second. I'll go grab something off of this board. Um, sure. Because... Everybody's actually admiring everything behind you, by the way. There were a ton of comments. Love your <laughs> quilt and wanting to know what's back there. So maybe we'll do placemats. But I had, you can tell these are some fabrics you saw me using in the um, towel ruffles. Whoops. Oh, yes. And I, this was a placemat and I just cut, you know, took like a marker. I, I stripped piece. Whoops. It's so backwards. I'm so backwards. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So I strip pieced this and then I just took a marker and marked out my curve, cut it. And then I had to kind of curve piece it, you know, together with the background and then finish it off, you know, using decorative stitches and that binding. But I just took, took extra fabric from this to start making my towels because I thought, well, maybe this would be really cute. But as I was putting the ruffles on there, I was thinking, I should make a towel with this. Ooh, that would look really <laughs> good, Brenda. We've got the placemat. Then we need napkins, too. We, we will, uh, you know, pot holders are coming. You know, I kind of I, I kind of got out of the pot holder, you know, put all my pot holder supplies away for a week or two, you know. We're already, we're already changing your next episode, girl. <laughs> <laughs> more kitchen, more kitchen. <laughs> Everybody's saying thank you. Well, this was an awesome episode. I absolutely love this. So pull a couple questions about, about the ruffler foot. Someone said, well, now, first of all, call your brother dealer and tell him what machine you have. Or you can even go on brothersews.com and find that as well. Uh, but someone was asking, will that work on the Quattro? Yeah. I can't remember that that's I before. believe so. I um, on the free machine, but I don't know why it wouldn't. Is it the same shank? Quattro. It was a quattro low that. shank. So if it will work, if if quattro's low shank, because I honestly can't remember at this moment. <laughs> I can't um, there's an adapter, so you, you might have to use an adapter, but at the very least, I don't. It's, I know it had the same snap on foot um, system as what we have on these. So um, just, yeah, Barbara Jones is saying, check your, check your shank and exactly um, check it, check your shank, ask your dealer, they can look that up. So yes. And if okay. you go to Brother Sews, which I have the website right down below here, if you go to brothersews.com and you uh, scroll, I think it's to the bottom, you can look for your dealer, 
punch in your zip code, not your area code. I always say area code. <laughs> and uh, you can find the closest one and just give them a call. They're very happy to work with you. And a lot of them are having specials. So keep that in mind too. All right. This ruffler foot is so much fun. And be sure, I just put the Instagram above for a second and then the website down below. Be sure to take brother when you share photos of this. They love to see what you're working on. They love it. And so do I. <laughs> yeah. Actually, so do we all, I should say. Yes. I was going to say fact, I do too. Yeah. I know yeah. after your last potholder one, uh, I three people emailed me within one day and it made a whole batch. I felt a little bit like I didn't get my game on because <laughs> I was like all excited. But I have it recorded, not recorded, but I have it saved to my YouTube channel. By the way, all of you watching on YouTube, did you know that when you go to Brother So's YouTube channel, that when you watch these videos, you can save them to your little list that you can go back and watch. Just a little tip there. <laughs> and if you're watching on Facebook, share it to your page and then you always know where it is. All right, everyone, this was a wonderful show. I'm very excited. More ideas for, it's not July anymore though, tea Christmas in July. <laughs> Brenda and Jane, thank you so much. And I hope you have, oh, Shirley says she has the quattro and it works great on hers. Awesome. Excellent. <laughs> All right. Let me just bring that down. And everybody's saying thank you, thank you. All right. Until next time, uh, this is it for the week. Saturday, we have an It's So Easy episode on Saturday. And then next week, we're here all over again on Tuesday at noon. I'm sure there's going to be more awesome quick and easy projects. I was trying to think how long could we possibly have quick and easy projects. But every time I see a new one, I'm like, we could probably do this for a whole year. <laughs> No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> Have fun uh, ruffling, everyone. Yes, thank you. It was great to see everyone. Bye. Thanks for watching. <laughs>